Our next step is to remove the cylinder heads. Now remember, there in your service manual, there is a detorque sequence for this cylinder head. It's very important that you detorque the bolts in sequence. If you don't do that, what happens is you take the risk of warping or twisting or damaging the cylinder head. So we want to make sure that we follow the tor detorque sequence on this cylinder head. So I'm, I'm going to follow the detorque sequence and basically you start on the ends. If you follow that, you'll see that the torque sequence has you start on the ends and work your way toward the center in sequence. Once you get all the head bolts loose, we simply remove the cylinder head off of the engine. Now you'll notice I set the cylinder head up. It's okay to go ahead and take your bolts. These bolts don't have to stay in order. You can just take these and put them in your storage bin. Notice that we did not lay the cylinder head down on this machine surface. You never want to do that on a steel bench. You can lay it on a piece of wood or cardboard or something. But this aluminum surface is very susceptible to damage if I lay it down on a steel bench. You don't ever want to do that. Now that you got your head off, the next step in your labs is going to be to check the cylinder head for flatness, for warpage and twist. This is a precision straight edge. It has a machined edge on it. You got to make sure one side is painted. That is not the, the edge side. You want to go to the side that has the bare metal. We're very gently going to lay our straight edge across the head. Your lab sheet is going to give you instructions as to how many places and just exactly how uh, uh, where you measure this. You're going to use the smallest filler gauge on your set, which is about two thousandths. And we just want to put this under here and make sure, you see how that filler gauge is pulling that straight edge? We want to make sure that this filler gauge does not slide under here easily. If it does, that indicates that the head is warped or damaged. But since it's pulling the straight edge in all of these locations, that is a good indication that the surface of this head is flat with intolerance. If the surface of the head is not flat, within the specified tolerance, the cylinder head has to be remachined and surfaced or in some cases the cylinder head has to be thrown away because there are certain manufacturers that do not allow you to surface their heads if they're warped you have to discard them and replace them. So that is cylinder head warpage and it is imperative that you follow your lab instructions and you check the warpage on the head to make sure that our head gaskets are going to seal properly. Next you have to disassemble your cylinder head. This tool is called a valve spring compressor and it is used to compress that valve spring. Now the proper way to use this, it has a handle that opens and closes. When you first initially put this on your first spring, you don't want this to be tight. So you want to take and you want to back these two, these two locating positions out. So just go ahead, they're threaded, back them all the way out. This portion of the tool is going to go on your valve spring and this portion of the tool here is going to go back here on your valve. So the tool basically goes on like this. This on the valve and this portion of the tool here is going to go right on top of your valve spring and your retainer just like that. Now what you want to do is we want to put this on there and you don't want this tight yet, you want this loose. Once you get that on there and you can see we don't, we're not compressing that spring, we have some space here, just take this and run it in until you take the slack out of this thing. And remember I've got my handle pushed in here all the way. So we run this in until we just touch off between the valve spring retainer and the head of the valve on the other side. So right there I haven't compressed my spring there, but I have this tool just touching the valve spring. And if you look at the back side here, we've got it on the head of the valve. Make sure you're on the head of the valve here. You don't want to be on this aluminum area of the head because you can damage it. Now that we've got that in that position, what we do is we just take the handle on the back, which is this here. And you see how this is adjustable? We just want to run this in. And as you run this in, what you're going to notice is that is going to start compressing that spring. So we want to just very 
gradually crank this in and compress that spring. The reason we do it this way is we don't want these too tight. If you over compress that valve spring down below this valve spring retainer on the top of the valve guide, there is a valve stem seal. And if you over compress that spring, it's going to damage that rubber valve stem seal. So we just want to run this in just far enough to expose our keepers. And you can see the, there's the two keepers right there. And then we're going to take a little magnet and we're going to pull those off. So your instructor will give you a, a magnet, a screwdriver magnet or one of these. And if you watch here, we're just going to go in and we're going to grab our keepers. So, so those are your valve keepers. Now you want to make sure you don't lose these. These are pretty small and you have to make sure that you uh, put them in a safe place where they're not going to get lost. Now once you get the keepers off, you can set those aside in a safe place. And now we simply grab onto the black handle here and very gently pull the handle out and that releases your valve spring compressor. And now we can take our retainer. That is your spring retainer right there. And it goes on top of the spring. And then we can grab our spring off of there. So that is your valve spring and your retainer. And now you can see we have exposed our valve. If you look right down there, you can see that there is a rubber valve stem seal right down in there. And that's what I don't want to damage by over compressing that spring. Now at this point, you just carefully push your valve out. And once you get that pushed out, you just pull your valve out and there, that is your valve and your seat. Now that you've got the valve out, you can set the head aside and we can start talking about how to measure this valve. All right, so now you'll notice that there is a valve guide. The valve rides inside of a valve guide. This is the valve that we took out. And you can see that as we take it out, the valve stem is gonna ride inside of that, that guide right there. You can see that it's going into the guide. Now, the clearance between the valve guide and the valve here is critical. We have to make sure we measure that. So one of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna take what we call a small hole gauge or a ball gauge and we're gonna measure the inside diameter of that guide. The tools we're gonna to use to evaluate the guide, this is what they call a small hole gauge. Now if you look closely at this, it has a split on it. And it has, a, it has an adjustable knob down here. So what you'll notice is as I run that out, that split starts to separate and this is getting bigger. So I wanna back that off until that split is, uh, I wanna back that off until this is down at its smallest point. And then we're just gonna take and we're gonna put the ball gauge into the valve guide and at that point what you do is you just turn this knob and you run that ball gauge out until it gets snug in the guide. So right there it's snug in the guide. It's not super tight. I can pull it out but it's snug. So what I have done is I have spread this out so that I am duplicating the size of the inside of that guide and then I just carefully retract it and then I need to mic this. I need to take my zero to one mic and when you mic the ball gauge, you want to mic it, you don't want to mic it on that split. You want to mic it 90 degrees to the split, right up here on these two halves of this ball, right here, because that is what has duplicated our guide size. So we just take our micrometer, the appropriate micrometer, and we mic right there on that ball. We just go in and touch off of it. So there you can see I've just mic'd that ball gauge right opposite the split and then I just document the size of my guide. Now you want to check the guide in three places, top, middle, and bottom to make sure that you don't have any taper. The next thing we want to do is we want to mic our valve stem because remember the guide can wear in there. If that guide wears, what happens is as this valve is going up and down and opening, 
it starts to flop around like this and it can cause off square seating here. It can cause leakage past the valve. It could also cause from the top of the head up here, it could cause oil to run down the valve guide and when that hot oil hits the valve, it burns and now you got smoke puffing out your tailpipe. So it can cause the engine to consume oil and it can cause poor seating. So we wanna make sure that the clearance is right. So we measured our guide to make sure it didn't have any taper right around, it was in spec. Next, we need to measure our valve stem. We also need to measure our valve stem. We're gonna measure that in three places to make sure that it is not tapered or worn or out of spec because and remember we we measured the guide wear on the guide can cause problems but wear on this valve stem can also cause problems and if the valve stem is worn out then we're gonna have to replace the valve so you want to measure this and make sure it doesn't have any taper okay guys so another one of your labs that you have to do is checking the valve spring the name of this lab is measuring valve spring height tension and squareness now if you open this lab up one of the things that we want to talk about here is our spec one of the issues with the valve springs is that the valve spring actually over time can become weak after these are actuated over and over and over again on the engine these springs can actually lose their tension over time and if they lose their tension it's going to cause problems with the engine a couple of things that happen with the valve spring. The valve spring actually controls the valve. So what happens if, if the valve spring becomes weak is it cannot control that valve as it's opening and closing. And so the valve as it opens and closes and it has this up and down motion here, if, if the valve spring, which is on the valve here, if this valve spring becomes weak, the valve at a certain RPM, when I get up to the higher RPM ranges, the spring actually loses control of this valve and the valve will come up and it will close against the seat. Now when it closes against the seat, the job of that valve spring is to hold that valve closed tightly so we have a sealed chamber down here. The issue that we run into is if the spring gets weak is that spring, that valve closes and it hits that seat. Now remember, this thing's going really fast here. So the valve hits the seat, the spring is too weak to hold the valve closed and that valve actually starts bouncing off the seat. So it comes closed and then it bounces back off and now we have a valve that is bouncing off the seat. Now, at really high RPM, this starts to happen very rapidly. So the valve is actually bouncing so much, it's basically, instead of seating, it's just kind of floating out here in this area where we can't have it. Because the problem is, is that the piston is gonna come up into that area. So the piston will come up and boom. If that valve is floating out here in this area because the spring can't control it, when the piston comes up to TDC, instead of the valve being closed, the valve's that floating out here and the piston can smack the valve and bend it and it can actually break the piston. So having the valve spring exert the correct amount of pressure on the valve is really important. So there's two places where we're gonna test that. When the valve is closed against the seat, so let's say the valve is closed, the spring is actually compressed and held onto the valve with the retainer and the keepers, we know that, and the spring is actually exerting pressure on that seat. It is holding that valve closed with pressure. That's one of the places where we check it. So the height that the spring sits at when the valve is closed is called installed height, and we have to compress the spring to get it on there. So we're gonna check our installed height. Now on your lab sheet, if you look at this graph here, it shows you compressed height and installed height. We wanna write our specs for our compressed height here and our installed height here. So if you can, get your lab sheets out. We wanna go ahead and write this in there. Now, if you look at this, my compressed height for my Ford engine that I'm building here is one inch, 180 thousandths, or 1.180. My installed height is 1.570. So in other words, that is where the spring is gonna sit when the valve is installed and closed. And when my cam opens my valve, it's gonna open it to that height there, over here. And so that's my compressed height and my installed height. Now, now that I've got the heights, I need to set my tester for those two heights and I need to test 
my valve spring and see how much pressure it exerts. Okay, so off camera what I did is I set the stop up here for my installed height, which is 1.570. That's the one you wrote down first. And then I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna pull the handle down on my tester here until I hit the stop. And I know it's gonna stop at 1570 and I'm gonna watch my pressure here. So here we go, I'm gonna compress it. And right there we have compressed our spring to 1.570 and you can see we have 50 pounds of pressure. So I would just write that down where it says installed high tension, I would write 50 pounds right here. Now I want to reset this and I want to set my tensioner for 1.180. Okay, so I reset this for 1.180 and now we're just going to go all the way down to 1.180 and you can see right there, I bottomed out on the stop and we have 150 pounds of pressure. I'm right here where it says compressed tension, I would write 150 PSI. So that's basically what we're doing is we're checking to make sure that the spring, and then I would take that pressure that I got 50 and 150, and I'm gonna compare that to the specs in my book because I wanna make sure that this spring has the correct opening and closing pressures. If it doesn't, it's gonna cause valve float, and that's, that's a real concern. The other thing that the springs control is the engine's RPM. If the springs are weak, the RPM is very sluggish. It comes up very slow, and once that valve starts floating in there, whatever RPM that is, and it's usually a lower RPM, right, than it should be, your RPM capability of your engine stops. You are not gonna be able to rev any higher than that with your engine, and so now you have an engine that doesn't rev up as high as it's supposed to, and you have the possibility of hitting a valve and a piston. That is, the procedure for checking the springs to make sure that they are within specifications so that your engine has the correct performance.